Hey, well, very good afternoon. Wonderful to see you. We've not met. I'm Archie and lead the church with Sam here and Catherine, who's our associate vicar. And what I want to do this week and next week is have a couple of Sundays together when we remind ourselves of the vision that God has given us as a church here at HTB, which is to play our part in the evangelization of the nations, the revitalization of the church, and the transformation of society. What would that look like? To see the homeless housed and the streets safe, relationships restored, the lonely loved, addictions broken, and the good news and the love of Jesus Christ everywhere. And there's three things that you and I can each do as part of that vision. The first is to pray. Please will you make it part of your business to pray for the evangelization of the nation and the revitalization of the church and the transformation of our society. We had two wonderful prayer and worship gatherings here on this last week. Uh, here in this building on uh, Tuesday night, we met for Kingdom Come, and there's a photo here of a packed church of people praying and worshipping. And then on Thursday evening in Queensgate, our venue, uh, we had a more classical worship, a prayer and worship event. I love that about HTB, uh, that we're able to offer this variety of style, contemporary, uh, classical, and so on, but all lifting up the name of Jesus and praying. So everybody praying, we'll, we'll continue to pray every Tuesday morning. We do this for half an hour. We do it on Zoom so as many of our community can gather. 7.30 till 8, every Tuesday morning, you can pick up the link via the website. Everybody praying, everybody helping out or, or serving as part of the vision as well. Uh, right now, there are 150 of our young people on the youth weekend away. But one of the things I noticed is that in addition to those 150, there's 36 adults who have gone as team. And if you do the maths, that means the ratio is just over one and three. One, there's one adult, one team member to every four of those young people. Can you imagine the care and the nurture and the encouragement that those young people are going to get through having such close relationship with a team member just looking after three or four of them. And one of the things that we're seeing across the church over the recent months and years is a greater number of you all being part of the teams that make the vision happen. So for example, uh, the kids' team since September, 71 new people have joined the kids' team across our sites on a Sunday morning. Uh, 144 new people have joined the social transformation ministries. In, over, acro across everything, all our teams, we've seen an increase of 30% of people in the church wanting to be part of teams in the last five years, uh, which just shows the people playing their part, not only in praying, but also in serving. So praying, serving, and then giving because the vision costs money. And what God has called us to do is underpinned by the generosity and the financial giving of the people who are part of the vision. And what we say is for everybody to give as little or as much as they're able to do, either monthly in a payment plan or in one-off donations. And you put all that together, and somehow the vision happens. One of the things that Nicky Gumbel used to say about our vision statement, he said the most important words of it are the first few words, to play our part. Because you've got a church here full of people with different life stages, different capacities, uh, different visions, different gifts, different stages of our faith, None of that is important. What, what is important is that each one of you and me find the part that we play. And then you, all those different parts come together and you get what I want to talk about for a few moments today, which is the power of partnerships. The power of partnerships. Actually, the word partner or, or partnership is something that we're very familiar with, whether it's in sport or in relationships, or business. One of my son's girlfriends 
Uh, she works 10 hours a week on a Friday and a Saturday night at Waitrose. She's a, a student, but she's also a partner of Waitrose. Because as you know, Waitrose is part of the John Lewis partnership. It's one of those employee-owned companies. She, along with 80,000 other people, has a share in that business. And if you're dropping by Victoria Waitrose, do say hi to her and remind her of that. <laughs> One day she's expecting a payout. I don't know whether she'll get it or not, but she's, she's a partner in the business. Actually, a partnership is a very New Testament word as well. Uh, Paul writes to the Philippian church. He says, whenever I think of you, I always remember you with joy because of your partnership in the gospel. And he says, and I'm confident, actually, that he, Jesus, who began this good work in you, he's going to carry it until it's completed through you. So partnership is something that we're very familiar with. Only the kind of partner that we're talking about in the New Testament, or what we might call a gospel partnership, is a little different. It has nothing to do with profit shares or cash dividends. And it's not about putting all the hours in and one day making it as partner. The partners that we're calling today, it's not about impressing anybody. You are already qualified as partner through your faith in Jesus Christ. And he has put in you the power of his Holy Spirit so that you can play a part and the return that you get is long-term, eternal even. And it's people, people becoming Christians, people being set free, the kingdom of God advancing. One of our church here, she's a doctor, she's an obstetrician and gynecologist, that's her job. But last September, she joined the student team here because she said that she wants all the students who come to study in London to find a home from home at HTB. And she meets up with these students in between her shifts at work, has coffee with them, invites them at weekends for lunch, goes to the student team night, went on the weekend away in November. She says, I, I love what I do because I bring life. I bring life through the birthing suites in my job and life through the students in my church. You know, my great desire is that every one of us will know the part that you play and that you play in this vision. And in the Gospels, we have a story of how this kind of partnership works and the power of it. Maybe a familiar story in Luke chapter 5 of when Jesus first calls his disciples. But let me read it for you. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And these are the two verses I want us to focus on particularly. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. And he goes, and when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they'd taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. And then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. 
So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. This is the, the power of partnerships right here. It's that partnerships increase capacity. One of my favorite TV shows is Dragon's Den. I know Sam always laughs when I say that. Well, do I not look like I would enjoy Dragon's Den? <laughs> what I like about Dragon's Den, so if you've not watched it, it's on the BBC if you've not watched it, and um, somebody comes in to pitch a business, an entrepreneur, um, and he pitches it or she pitches it to um, some investors, dragons, hoping that they will invest in the business in return for some equity in the business. And sometimes they do, and, and sometimes they don't. What I like most, though, is sometimes what they pitch is such a great business that more than one dragon wants to play a part in it. And they begin to like, have a discussion about themselves to sort of a bit of one-upmanship. You know, well, I've got a manufacturing plant that you could have access to. And I've got all these contacts that you could have. And I can open these doors for you. And what's happening is that the entrepreneur, the person wanting an investment, is coming with something. And the investor has something themselves that they can offer. And you put those two things together, that's a partnership. They are able to do something together that is of far greater capacity than one or other of them could do on their own. Okay, so here Peter has caught some fish but he realizes that the potential is far greater than he can catch on his own. So he signals to his partners to come, and together they increase their capacity. Welcome to the story of HTB, where once upon a time there was a church that began a course for people inquiring into the Christian faith. And after they'd been running this course a little while, other churches in London noticed and asked whether they could borrow the course and adopt it for themselves. It's called Alpha. And after these different churches had been running it, churches outside of London in different regions around the UK said, I wonder if that works in London, whether it would work in our area of the country. So they adopted and ran Alpha as well. And then pretty soon, other nations and other denominations around the world said, well, if it works in the UK, maybe it could work in our denomination, in our country. So they adopted Alpha. And my goodness, there was so many fish that the nets were beginning to break. So we set up Alpha International so those nets wouldn't break and so the capacity could be increased and more fish could be caught. And last year, 2023... More people did Alpha, 1.9 million people around the world, than in any single year since Alpha began in 146 countries. See, partnerships, partnerships increase capacity. Once upon a time, there was a church that was invited to plant some people from their church to revitalize another church locally. So they sent out a group of people and those, that church began to flourish. And then the other opportunities came, both in London and then before long, outside of London, other dioceses and other parts of the Church of England said, could you plant some churches in us? And so uh, there were so many fish that the nets were beginning to break. And so we set up St. Melitus College, partnering with the Church of England to train up leaders who could then go out from here and help plant these churches around the UK. And in the 17 years since we established as part of the vision St. Melitus College, 1,323 clergy have been trained through the college and we have 150 of these church plants around the UK. The latest one was the one we sent out last summer to Manchester. And uh, just this last month, we secured this building, which is a former army barracks in Manchester. And we're beginning to renovate it 
inside in partnership with the Diocese of Manchester and the Church of England. And on March the 24th is going to be their first Sunday in this renovated new building because partnerships increase capacity. And then, and then as these opportunities grew and the plants began to happen, we realized we needed like a whole operation that would undergird this. I mean, finance and buildings and discussions with bishops and dioceses. So as part of the vision, we set up the Revitalized Trust because there were so many fish that the nets were beginning to break. And so we needed to partner up to increase capacity. And the Revitalized Trust was born as part of the vision as well. Because according to Luke chapter 5, God has lots of fish in deep waters. Put out into deep water, he says to Peter, and let down your nets for a catch. Because our God is not a shallow water, only a few fish kind of God. So Peter puts down his nets, catches fish, realises that he needs to increase capacity, signals to his partners who come over, and it says that pretty soon both boats were full of fish. Tell me, do you think that if Peter had managed to get hold of a third boat and signaled to them to come over, their boat would have been full as well? Yeah, I do. And what about a fourth boat, if you manage to get hold of a fourth one and a fifth one? Absolutely. God will keep giving, pouring himself into any boat that we give to him. So I say, let's get boats all across London into all the deep waters. Let's have boats in the universities, boats in the care homes, boats in the prisons, boats for Alpha, boats for young people. Let's get boats everywhere. Let's see God fill them all with his presence and his power and his glory, and his grace. For the fish are never in short supply. It is only ever the availability and the willingness of the partners. So how do you, you and I, how, how do we step into, if you like, this kind of partnership? Well, the clue is, in these verses here again. It says, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. This is the secret of becoming a partner. It's when one person signals to another person that they need help. And that other person comes and lends a hand. And together, they achieve something that is far greater than they would have been able to do just on their own. I suppose Peter could have said, well, look, my nets are breaking but I've got quite a good catch. I'll just get in what I can, and it's, that'll do. But instead, he saw that there was even greater potential, but he needed help, so he signaled his partners to help bring it in. It strikes me that our world is becoming increasingly atomized, polarized, individualized, consumerist, autonomy, self-fulfillment, self-expression, underpinned by unsocial media. But for the sake of the vision that God has given us, the greater potential, we must not let those values become the values of our church. You know, I know my, my own tendency in life very often is towards self-sufficiency. Something I'm very aware of, that I'm not always good at asking for help. I sort of almost like, I'm fine, I've got it. 
Anyone else like that? But Brené Brown in her book, Daring to Lead, she says, we hate asking for help because we're frightened of being judged. But then she says, what's interesting about communities that build trust is that they are communities who are good at asking for help from one another. Communities that tend to be in over their heads, that are forced to rely on one another, tend to be the tightest knit communities where the trust is greatest. I wonder sometimes whether God has given us a vision here at HTB that is so big that it puts us in over our heads because it forces us to help one another and to partner up and to rely on one another, to shift in our culture and let the church be a beacon of from me to us and from I to we. Self-help is not a concept that you will find in the Bible. But helping others and asking for help most definitely is. It's the beauty, I think, of our, our, our network of churches. Network. Net. Get it? And, and focus. And sure, I, I can talk to you about all the ways about focus our long weekend away in July, about what's in it for you. I mean, it's value for money. You can do accommodation off-site. Great teaching. I hear the weather already is going to be good. <laughs> but I would prefer to talk to you about what's in it for us. Not for you, but through you for us. For the whole is always greater than the sum of the individual parts. And something extraordinary happens when we get together. C can you see this morning? I I'm, I'm signaling here to my partners. I, I need help. I mean, there are so many fish there. If only we could get more boats, more partners, more nets in the water we could increase our capacity. What, what boat are you going to bring? What boat will you play a part in in increasing the capacity of what God wants to do in this vision? Just finally, do you notice in the story, maybe you're familiar with it, what happens when Peter gets to the shore with all his fish? It says that he falls at Jesus' knees and worships him. Which is a little strange because one thing that I know about people who like to fish, I mean, no offence if this is you, but you do tend to make it rather about yourselves. I mean, you post pictures on Instagram of the big fish you've caught. And you, and you measure the length of your fish to the inch and weigh it to the ounce. And actually, elsewhere, Peter does count his fish, 153. So he's got a little bit of that going on as well. But here, all that seems to get lost. There's no discussion here about who caught what and who worked the hardest and who's got the most. It all gets lost in the focus of worshipping Jesus, the one true senior partner as they are astonished, it says, by the catch that they have caught. And then after this, when Jesus notices that, this is the interesting bit, it's when Jesus notices that that's what's going on, the response of their hearts, that is when he calls them to become his disciples. Because this is what he's been looking out for all along. It's the response of their hearts. He, he wants the people he can work with who will follow him at his word. But because you say so, I will. And he needs people who are self-aware enough to signal for help when they're drowning. And people who are not unwilling to go into deeper waters or to lay down their own version of what success looks like 
for the sake of a greater cause, and above all, people who are humble enough to fall at their knees and worship him. And when he, he sees all this, he says, ah, these are the kind of people I can work with. These are my boys. And he says that they come follow me and we'll catch people together. And so they pull up their boats, it says, leave everything and follow him. And I believe that that is the invitation afresh to us at HTB in this season, to partner up, to partner with one another in this extraordinary vision, to refuse the culture of our world that would lead to atomization and individualization, but instead to break that and bring about an extraordinary community of God sitting under Jesus, the senior partner, towards the evangelization of the nations, the revitalization of the church, and the transformation of society. Amen.